when we go to the grain store, we try to pick up a few bags of organic grain, especially for the meat birds. They're growing a ton and they go through quite a bit of feed. It's a little pricey, but this way we know we have it. It'll be in the basement. And once they're ready to go and butcher, we'll have already taken care of the investment. And now we just gotta worry about getting the birds from the field to the freezer. One of the really cool things our local feed store offers on, I think it's in the month of May, they do a customer appreciation day and they give you $2 off a bag of grain of pig feed. So we buy a whole pallet worth of pig feed and then that way when the pigs are here, we've already spent the money on the feed. We don't gotta worry about that. Now the only extra cost we have on the pigs since they're on the homestead is butchering if we're gonna do it ourselves, we won't have that expense. So if you got a nice cool dry area, you know, buy your grain, and stock it up. Not only is it nice to have it if you can get it on sale, it's just nice to have it at the house. You don't gotta worry about running out of food and then having to run out to town to get what you need. It's another warm one today, guys, so being in the basement feels good. Been outside working all day, stripping some siding off our house in the sun, so I'm enjoying being in the basement for a few minutes. But that won't last long. We got plenty of projects to do before everybody else gets home. And hey, let's take a peek at the Icelandic eggs. The cool thing about this incubator, it's got a day counter. So it knows what day it is, it's on day one. And then it turns the eggs on its own. Right now, the humidity level doesn't seem to be working right. I don't know what's up with that. It's been reading 34%. I know it's more than 34% because look at the moisture building up. Hopefully, it's not too high on the moisture. We'll have to figure that out. All right, you listened. Hey, I'm unpacking my truck from working for the day, and I wanted to show you guys something. It works awesome for me. I can't take credit for this, because I didn't come up with it. But right here, I have, that's just a leftover, I think, jug from windshield washer fluid, whatever, cleaned out. But what I do is I put water and salt in here. So you have salt water, you stick it in your freezer. So what happens is, is salt water freezes at a lower temperature than regular water. So it takes this longer time to freeze, I think that's the science behind it. And then this jug right here will last super long. The ice lasts longer, it takes a longer time for it to defrost. So when we went to the Mother Earth News Fair on Saturday, I think it was 80 degrees that day. We brought two of these, we went to Trader Joe's in the morning, because they open up at eight, the fair didn't open till nine. We did a bunch of shopping at Trader Joe's, loaded up the cooler with all frozen food, put in two jugs, and it lasted the whole time while we were at the fair in the trunk. And then when I've been working, this has been, I think it's 94 degrees out today. It's just been in the back of the truck. That's still frozen. Um, it's not even half melted yet. So these things work awesome. It's a great way, cheap, expensive way to keep your foods cold. We're gonna stick it back in the freezer. It's reusable. I don't gotta go buy ice every time I need some. Oh yeah, like I said, I can't take credit for this. I learned this from Boss of the Swamp. If you guys haven't checked out his channel before, go over to Boss of the Swamp. I'll leave a link in the description below to his channel and tell him hi that Al from Lumna Acres sent you guys and you wanted to check out his channel. He's got a great channel. This morning while I was out doing my chores and feeding the chicks in New York City, I was listening to my electric fence. I'll bring you guys out there and I'll let you listen. And I went, that battery's dying. So what I do is I have two batteries going. This battery right here is all charged up. I got a trickle charger that I just keep in my basement with two batteries going. So we gotta bring this battery outside and swap it out for the other one. My brother calls me cheap. I call it resourceful. If I don't have the money to go out and buy a big old expensive solar charger, I had two car batteries kicking around and you can get the charger I had at Tractor Supply I think for under 50 bucks, so why not? You wanna come out, Pluto? Come on. Right, 
Let's see if we can hear it, guys. Hear it? The clicking noise is very faint. That means the battery's getting low. Good afternoon. Did you want to say something? What did you want to say? Oh, hey, Spots. You need your camera time, too? All right, we gotta get back to work. You need to get back to work, too. You got dirty forehead, so I can tell you've been digging in the compost for us. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Biggs. So this is just a side post battery that I was able to get that I knew was a good battery. And I just have threaded rod. Hey! We're trying to make a video here, Mr. Biggs. Thank you. And we just thread it in, the threaded rod. And then we can just clip our clamps on there. Fits down in here better. Can you hear that? You can see the light a lot better now and you can hear it, it's clicking a lot louder. So what we're using for a dolly here, a firewood dolly. We're using the winter time for our firewood. And then we use it this time of the year for our electric fence setup. I think I paid five bucks for the dolly, so I mean, you can't go wrong. Now that it's getting warm out, we have to make sure our animals have a great supply of water even when we're not here at the modern homestead. So our Icelandic chickens didn't water system. The bucket had a hole in it and it was leaking. So I went out, I got a new five gallon bucket, took my barb out of our old bucket. We used to have the barb here with it being a contour. They didn't seat very nicely. But this one we're experimenting. I drilled a three quarter inch hole in the bottom of my bucket and then thread, threaded in a three quarter inch pipe thread to a three eighths barb fitting. Hook this up and I'll show you guys how I purge their water system. The best thing I found for transporting water around the modern homestead is a five gallon jug, like Poland Spring jug, like a five dollar deposit on it. So for five bucks, it's worth it guys. I saved the cap, the cap you can use. It's got an awesome handle to pick it up and lug it around with. And it holds five gallons. Watch out, blow down. I gotta find the hose. Watch out, watch out. Just take our cover, snap it on there. We got a nice handle to lug it with. Now guys, remember, I'm doing this one-handed. Don't laugh at me. If I drop it, I make a big old mess. Another Icelandic egg. Woohoo! Thank you, ladies. Oh, we got some water on the thing. Man! That's better. All right, so what you need to do at this point is unplug Get your water running. You can see it coming through. Once you have a good flow, plug it in. And now, oops. Get all your air out of the system. If you don't do that, the chickens won't get water for a while. Sometimes when there's not much pressure, they start to leak. So just sit here for a second See if the dripping stops, and if it doesn't, make some adjustments. I always keep some extra ones of these at the house. They're not very expensive, and they, they are pretty cheap. So now our chickens have five gallons worth of water to drink while we're not here on the homestead for the day. You know, sometimes it's eight, 10, 12 hours. That's gonna last them, especially these three birds. That'll last our meat birds more than a day, so we're styling. Now you can see where we had the meat birds. The grass looks bad. It looks like it's burnt and it's never gonna come back, but you guys saw what it looked like 
this spring before I even had a chance to mow it from having the meat birds on it. It looked like this last year, and then it looked like this. I'll link the video right here. You guys, this is what the grass looks like afterwards. But I'll, I'll post the video right here showing you what the field looked like this spring before I did our first mowing. What I do sometimes, if I know I'm going to be in a rush when they need water later on, I keep a couple of these jugs around right here. Right, Pluto? And I'll fill it up and then just bring it down here. So if I know, oh, I'm going to be in a rush later on, i got this, this, and this to do, I'll already have my five gallons of water down here, and I don't got to go up, lug it down, and fill it all up and everything. So just try to think ahead. Keep in your mind what you have going on later on because you got to make sure your animals always have plenty of water. Sometimes if they don't want to move, I'll take this and kind of scare them forward. Pluto, you're not supposed to scare them back. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I dumped some of the grain right on the grass and the most of it in the feeder. The reason why I put it on the grass is I want the chickens to know the grass is where your food comes from. There's bugs. I want them to start to learn to scratch and to dig and eat the grass and find bugs and worms and stuff. So I put it down on the grass and the majority of it I put in the feeder just that way I don't want it going bad, but I want the chickens to learn, especially the meat birds. This is where your food is. Start digging and scratching. And guys, it works. Ready? Look. They haven't even been here for 12 hours, and look at that. Boom. I moved them this morning at 6 o'clock, and I believe it's 4.30 right now. So look at that. That's just amazing. So they are eating the grass. I mean, it was tall just like this before we moved them. So that's making them learn, okay, the grass is our food. We need to scratch and dig and find bugs also. And that's just gonna translate into healthier birds, which is gonna be healthier for us to eat. Since we're walking by our squash field, we had a few viewers asking us at the Mother Earth News Fair how the squash field was doing. Let's show you guys. This was just planted the other day. Look at these things. They're loving it. They're just jamming. Woohoo! Look, oh, look at that. Yeah. I mean, every row is just doing awesome, guys. Look at this one. Bam. We didn't water this garden at all after we transplanted them. That's the awesome part about planting stuff in compost. The cucumbers, oh look. They're small, but they're starting to get that other leaf growing out. I don't know, what's the name of that leaf? The third leaf when they start growing that. Leave it in the comments down below if you know. Go look at your tomatoes on the other side. The one that has the flower on it. It looks like it grew a foot today. Did it grow a tomato? Pluto, come on. Nothing yet. Does that look a lot taller? Or is it just me? Well, something. And then the flower's yep. getting ready to bud. Yep. I looked out the window and I'm like, really? That thing's huge. <laughs> We hope you guys liked today's video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, share it, it really helps. Don't forget we're on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And our sign on social media is Lumna Acres. And we'll see you right back here tomorrow, guys. At Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom. Bye. Bye. Bye.